Welcome to the course Environmental Impact Assessment and in today's session we are going to look at the case study and in particular we will look at uh, case study of Mumbai Metro Line 3 which uh, is proposed to run from Kulaba Bandra to Seeps. And uh, when we do this case study, we'll look at all the aspects which we have covered so far from the environmental concerns to legislation to different methods, uh, public participation and how do we look at the alternatives and all that. So uh, uh, here uh, you will see how whatever we have studied, how that it uh, culminates into a case study. So this is a very specific case study, but we'll look at that and see how uh, we are prepared and how does the uh, case study looks like. So the coverage would include that we'll today, in today's session we'll just look at the case study and the expected learning outcome is that you should be able to relate all the learnings from the environmental status to legislation to different methods to process to public participation and alternatives. So all the understanding you should be able to uh, review from this particular case study. So looking at this case, uh, Mumbai Metro Rail uh, uh, Corporation project which is proposing to have Mumbai Metro Line 3. So you can see in the diagram as well. So it is proposed to run from Kulaba Bandra to Seeb's area. And uh, if you remember, we had seen the socio-impact assessment for this particular report itself. So uh, the, looking at the purpose of this project, uh, it, uh, it is mainly for decongesting the existing public transportation system and increasing the mobility across the region. So through this project, they are trying to reduce the uh, environmental impact which is happening. So uh, through this project, they are trying to do this. And uh, we see that uh, it has been funded by GICA which is Japan International Corporation Agency and uh, for, uh, they are funding it uh, for the construction of this metro line 3. And uh, if you look at it, uh, this particular document uh, provides uh, the environmental impact assessment. So looking at the salient feature of the project, we see that it has a uh, design speed of 80 kilometers per hour, scheduled speed of 30 kilometers per hour and uh, the range of power demand, the substations which will be there, capacity of eight coach units. So that's going to take 2,406 passengers and signaling and train control which will be there, fare collection, depot location, which is at RA Mill Colony, which you must have heard in the news as well. And then also train operation, what will be the hours of operation and what's the headway. Um, and then um, uh, other details, the project cost, you can see uh, it's in the range of 243,400 uh, million um, Indian currency. So you can see and what would be the power requirement. So that's the scale of the project we're looking at. And the objective of the study, if you'll see this uh, EIA document is to facilitate MMRDA which, uh, MMRDA, which is Mumbai Metropolitan Regional Development Authority, in preparation of EIA report as per the requirement of regulatory and funding agency. So you see that how every EIA is made within the regulatory uh, or the funding agency's requirement. So we see the scope of this EIA, which includes the impact resulting from uh, all the phases of construction, pre-construction, construction operation phases of this uh, metro corridor and whatever ancillary functions, depot and substations which will come up. And uh, since uh, MMRC has planned to get funding from Japan International Corporation Agency for construction of Mumbai Metro Line, uh, you will see that usually MOEFCC doesn't require uh, the uh, as per the list which we have studied, it doesn't uh, falls under uh, environmental clearance. But since it's uh, required by the funding agency, the environmental uh, impact assessment report was prepared for this. 
So, looking at uh, this limitation of this particular EIA report, you see that impact assessment study for the project uh, was prepared largely based on the available project information, so what information they had, and also discussion with the local community and stakeholders and observations from what various studies and investigations they undertook. And a lot of professional judgment and subjective interpretation of fact has been applied to the study. So they are also uh, giving their limitation in place. And you will see that uh, impact assessment study uh, has been undertaken for alignment uh, that was approved. So you see the designing was already there by MMRCA uh, done in 2015. So based on that, the impact assessment has been done. So how clearly they are stating based on what it has been done. And then uh, you see that uh, since Japan International Corporation Ag Agency, JICA, was involved, it was their requirement that the EIA has to be done as they are the uh, lending agency here. So they, uh, according to them, their uh, requirement was that there should be transparent and account accountable process as well as active participation of key stakeholders are required. So we had discussed this that the, uh, even funding agencies have their requirements. So according to that, EIA was prepared for this and uh, they aligned with the World Bank operation policy uh, 4.0, so about which also we have studied. So you see that how each things are aligning here and how that references have been made. And even you see that GICA recognize, has certain uh, principles which one has to undertake while they are dealing with the projects relating to wide range of environmental and social impact which has to be addressed through the project and then how different measurements of environmental and social considerations have to be taken at the early stage of the project and then how accountability and transparency has to be maintained and how stakeholders' uh, uh, opinions have to be incorporated and what kind of disclosures have to be make, made and then um, how one needs to look into the capacity of the organizations and operations of the project and then also implementation of the projects while undertaking em environmental and social considerations. So how uh, even the implementation has to be undertaken there. So here you see the World Bank's operational policies and guidelines which are given in the EIA report itself, so which they have acknowledged and then they have identified what are the requirements. So this also you have already seen, so environmental assessment, operational policy, 4.01 environmental assessment, then you see the natural habitats, how they have to be taken care of, then how even the pest management, involuntary uh, resettlement, which also we have seen, indigenous people, uh, consideration which has to be undertaken, even that has been addressed, how the forest, physical, cultural resources, safety of dams, project disputed areas, project on international waterways. So all these has been acknowledged and referred to in the EIA document. Likewise, you see they have also addressed the equator principle uh, three uh, also. That reference has also been made, so you have also gone through that while we studied the subject. Thereafter, you see that they also address legal policy and institutional framework. So within all the domains, so all the domain which you have studied, you can see, look at the list here. You can see the water-related domain, what kind of policies would be applicable, noise uh, pollution related, what kind of law, laws will be applicable, likewise municipal solid waste rules, environmental protection act, forest, wildlife, metro railway, metro railway, Delhi metro railway and ancient monuments and archaeological sites and remains. So you see how legal policy and institutional framework has been addressed. So they have systematically, they have looked at all the aspects, law, regulation guidelines and then what features they would adapt, will it be applicable or not and reasons for its applicability and wh whose responsibility will it be implementation responsible agencies. So they have identified all the legal requirements here. So you have uh, gone through all of these, you can see all this air related noise, forest, so we have done elaborate coverage on all the legislation part. So you see how that has to be addressed in an EIA report. So you also see the hazardous waste, 
management thing, motor vehicles, development control regulation, then resettlement and rehabilitation. So all these have been uh, addressed here in the EIA report. So likewise, you also see applicable international uh, conventions. So we have also studied this. So you see in the EIA report how they are also acknowledging international conventions. So starting from Montreal Protocol to Kyoto Protocol and all that has been listed here. Further, what kind of clearance requirements will be needed for the project has been also specified here in the table. You can see permission for the tree cutting, development permission near World Heritage Structure, must disposal permissions, resettlement permissions, consent to establish, consent to operate, permission to store hazardous material, explosive license, and all uh, certificates for use of vehicles for construction and so on. So you see that how all clearance requirement has been also notified here. Then you see the institutional framework within which they are working. So the key uh, institution which is responsible is Ministry of Environment and Forest, the nodal agency which we have been referring all the time. So you see that's the uh, key agency here and the other agencies which uh, you have also studied, Central Pollution Control Board as well as National Green Tribunal, then you also have Central Ground Water Authority and then also the state related Maharashtra Pollution Control Board and so on. So all that has been listed, you can have a look at this report. So uh, that was about the uh, institutional framework. Now, moving ahead to approach and methodology. So what approach did they uh, apply, uh, um, adopt here? So you see that uh, as per the technical feasibility, the alignment was uh, undertaken as per the socioeconomic acceptability. And there were a lot of factors which guided how uh, they would come up with the alignment for the metro rail. So based on the final alignment of the uh, proposed alignment, then they worked out in different phases. So impacts were assessed uh, for various phases of the project cycle. So we also try to see what project cycles are there. So uh, looking at the impacts due to project location, impact due to project design, then impacts due to project construction and project operation. So based on that, uh, this uh, they had done this plus like we talked about like you also refer to a lot of other documents. So here they refer to detailed project report DPR of the proposal plus EIA report by rights and they also looked at environmental and social management plan. Uh, and then uh, they also looked at the baseline monitoring plan and then uh, also the environment and social management plan. So all this was looked at. So here you see how they aligned with uh, referred to different standards. So we have also seen that different standards. So you see that they have looked at the drinking water quality standards, effluent discharge standards, and then tolerance limits for inland surface water quality. So all these sources have been identified for you in previous lectures. So you also see national ambient air quality standards, national ambient noise standards. So all these are addressed in the report. You can have a look. So now uh, next part, what we see in the EIU report, uh, as we had also learned about the structure of EIU report. So you see there's a, a project description. So uh, I, I'm not going to get into the complete details of the project description, but I'll just tell you the key elements so that we understand the imp associated impacts. So uh, here project description, it gives uh, like what's the existing transportation scenario and why this particular uh, metro line has been proposed. So if you remember the need of the project has to be emphasized. So uh, and then the details of the project have to be given. So you see there uh, that they have uh, talked about the existing system and then the proposed metro uh, system in Mumbai and uh, what all will happen within that. So they are giving the project description here. So within this, just to understand the nature of the project, there might be ventilation star, star shafts because there will be a lot of underground stations which might come and that has a lot of ventilation requirement, a lot of heat is generated in the process. So those kind of requirements would come. 
then there would be tunnel boring machine work sites so which will create underground tunnels so for that so you see how much description of tunnel uh, boring machine work sites would be the number of sites have been listed here in the report and where it will be located during the construction of the project. So all that has been identified. I have put the picture of just tunnel boring machine so that we understand what scale, what kind of thing we are talking about. And then uh, there might be, uh, there will be also need for casting yards. So all this will be uh, pre-constructed uh, and then would be uh, taken to the construction site. So you see the details of tunnels and opening station boxes which would be there as the casting yards and where all these uh, from where to where these casting yards would be and um, how much area they would take. So I have put the picture also so that we understand how the casting yard looks like and then also uh, various location where this casting yards would come and then uh, what are the details of different casting yards pr uh, proposed here. So you see the range of places which are proposed and then they have also provided the drawings of um, casting yards. So you can see here in the drawing. So uh, uh, they have uh, ex uh, explained the complete project detail uh, in detail. We are skipping those details here. Further, they have analyzed the alternatives like we discussed uh, like uh, to ensure that what has been proposed is the best available alternatives uh, or optimum alternatives. So that has to be established. So here they have analyzed the alternatives and alternatives have been uh, analyzed on the way of like uh, they have looked at the different alignments for planning of this plus uh, uh, alignment has been taken uh, with due consideration of catchment area, integration with the other mass transit corridor like how it connects with the other co co uh, transit systems then uh, what is the feasibility of construction and the environment and social aspects. So keeping that in point they have designed the alignment and alternatives have been considered. So uh, they have looked at uh, certain alternatives. Alternative one deals with cuff parade road, which involves fishermen colony. Alternative two deals with cuff parade road alignment follows foreshore road. So all these you can see in the map. They have provided the map as well. So that's the entire Mumbai master plan. You can see metro master plan, and you can see in the red and yellow the alternatives which have been discussed here. So yellow alternative one and so on. So what options they have, alternatives they are looking at. So another alternative they tried on depot planning, like where all uh, the depot would come. Uh, uh, the project needed dedicated depot for the maintenance of the rakes. So you can see in the picture what rakes are like and they would need depot for that. So you see that they have proposed alternative sites for the depot. You can see in the map how they have these sites, Mahalakshmi race course, then you can see in some central part, Kalina University land and then RA Milk Colony. So finally, uh, uh, like the project description tells that they are going to build it at the Arab Mill colony. So a major section of the proposed metro corridor is also provided like at what phase three where all they will do it. Then ridership on proposed metro corridor so that study is also undertaken. Then uh, you also see they have provided construction methodology. So that's also uh, with extensive detail has been provided. So I'm not getting into the details. So what kind of construction strategy they have adopted here has been well explained. So uh, like we had discussed before that uh, even the designs can change, uh, even the layouts can change. There can be many alternatives. So how with uh, uh, it's a construction methodology they are handling the environmental path. So you can see the construction, they have also mentioned construction period, they have mentioned uh, construction methodology which they have used and then uh, all the details of different locations where they will undertake that. So that was about the construction methodology. Now uh, coming on to the baseline data, so th that's the key part of the environmental impact assessment. So where they are establishing uh, baseline data. So you, here you see that they use uh, mostly 
the secondary data as well as uh, reference from the other studies and they have also conducted study. So just to look at, we have already covered baseline data, how to undertake it domain wise in uh, detail. So we are just going to uh, skim through and then see how, how it comes in the report. So you see here that they have provided environmental attributes and frequency of monitoring, then they have identified how it is impacting the land environment. Uh, then you can see how they have presented all the tables related with soil test results. Then you can see uh, all the uh, data which was available with the ground investigation data which was already there. You can see geological map of Mumbai, then you can see the seismic zone map and then seismic hazard map of Maharashtra. So they have studied all that, water level trend they have studied in this place, water quality at the project site, then hydrologic map, hydrology of Mumbai they have studied, then the meteorology data they have gathered here. And then a very intensive study of air quality data and for different, different you can see for different uh, months they have collected, monitor, uh, collected the uh, data here. So uh, I have just snipped some of them, this elaborate data there. And they have also connected, collected data on the noise environment, also uh, vibration uh, data also has been collected in the map they have also shown from where all which places they have connected collected these data. So you can see how they have put the pictures and also evidences of how and when they are collecting that data. So you can also see the dates coming, the equipments coming and the location coming in the picture and then how they are preparing the graphs related with that. So other uh, you see here they are also talking about the na uh, national park, uh, then also land use pattern from where the depot are coming and then uh, what all uh, 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 area, uh, na uh, Mahim nature park which is coming here. So uh, they have identified all the legally protected species. So we have studied about this, how we need to identify, that's the basic that you identify in every context, in every country, what's the protected list. So they have taken it as per the Mumbai region. So you can see elaborate list coming here. Uh, even this list goes very long, I've just taken one snip. So. Uh, here you can see the also mangroves of uh, Miti estuary here, so which is identified as a sensitive area. Then you can see Sanjay Gandhi National Park also which falls within this zone and then common plant species of the Sanjay Gandhi National Park has been identified and elaborate list has been created. Then we had also learnt about modified habitat, so there is also modified habitat in this area which is Mahim Nature Park, Dharavi, then you also see Kulaba Woods Garden uh, here, so you can see in the picture these areas. So you see that uh, they identified potential ecological impact of the project, so it would lead to removal of trees, it would lead to loss and degradation of biodiversity and it would lead to loss and degradation of soil. So that was identified in the project. Then further they looked into socio-economic conditions. So uh, for this they prepared a separate report, social impact assessment for Mumbai Metro Corridor. So we have already uh, seen that briefly when we were covering socio-economic impact assessment. Uh, however, I have given the link again if you wish to see that, uh, uh, the report again from this perspective. So you can see, so uh, we see here that overall project impact, how much land would be acquired, how much impact it would have on the structure, how many uh, project affected people would be there and total project affected people and surveyed people and so on, all that uh, details have been given and then other how it is going to influence all the historical sites. So that's also given here. So you see that they have identified CST railway station which is like for, uh, for, uh, distance from the center of metro alignment, it's just 40 meters away. Then you can see the BMC building which is 22 meters away and Western Railway headquarters which is 45 meters away. So you can see all these uh, CST, BMC and Western Railway headquarters, how they look like just so that you can visualize them and then also relate with the alignment so you can see in the map also how it is.
then uh, they have also identified the sensitive receptors. So, we have understood the concept of sensitive receptors. So, they have identified. So, you can see the educational institutions, hospital, temples, mosque and so on they have identified and um, how far it is. And then you can also see a, l a tree inventory which they have done for each station along the uh, Mumbai metro line 3. So, the list almost goes like 200 pages and we are talking about 500 plus pages page of EIA report. So, the list or, or documentation goes on nearly 200 pages. So, you can see in which zone it is coming uh, and uh, how they have grouped it and num which station it is. Uh, trees to be retained and trees to be removed all those numbers have been quantified here and trees to be planted. So, uh, how that is how they have undertaken is intensive documentation uh, they have undertaken. So, now looking at the negative environmental impact. So, the negative environmental impact is like uh, you have uh, they have identified as like on the land environment water, air, noise, biological environment and socio-economic environment. So, they have identified all that. And, uh, uh, there are impacts due to the project locations and then that they are like you have project affected people which will be dis, uh, affected economically or physically then there there will be also change of land use then there will be also loss of trees and forests then also there will be problem with utility drainage problems and then there will be also problem with the historical and uh, cultural monuments and then also there has been anticipated impact on the local transport facilities. So, you have already seen how one undertakes all these things. So, the, these are all covered in this particular report and uh, here you can quickly see that how they have identified the land requirement for this particular project for all the uh, components of the project. So, also the loss of trees in forests. So, the total number of trees to be cut is 673 and what kind of increase will be there in carbon dioxide uh, and what is the formula they have used for calculation has been given and then decrease in oxygen production. So, that kind of cal calculations they have made. Then also uh, all these related with drainage and uh, also historical and cultural monuments and then impact on local transportation facility, impact on mangroves and then they have identified the ecological impact. So, which is like loss, degradation, fragmentation of natural mangroves, uh, forest habitat. So, we have studied what does fragmentation means, what degradation and loss means and then uh, loss and degradation of ecosystem services. We have already studied that loss of genetic and specific biodiversity. We are familiar with that. And then they have taken management measures like compensatory afforestation at the nearby, si nearby site, then plantation of five times as many plants as the number removed and plantation of native mangrove species. So, that is what ma management measures they are going to adopt. And then now we see impacts due to project design. So, project design part they have platform inlet and outlet, ventilation and lighting, metro station refuse and risk due to earthquake. So, um, most of it by the design no hazard was anticipated to the proposed sizes of inlet and outlet and then they also have uh, studied how they are going to manage the garbage, rubbish and floor sweeping. So, that would be taken care of and risk due to earthquake has been already taken care of within the design elements of the project. Now, looking at impact due to the project construction. So, uh, they have identified environmental hazards which will occur due to the construction work related with soil. Uh, they would be like soil erosion, traffic diversion, impacts of the proposed road improvement work, muck disposal, dust generation, increased water demand, impact due to construction of tunnel, impact due to land subsidence, landslides, supply of construction material uh, and then what kind of loss will happen to historic and cultural monuments and so on. So, all that has been uh, identified what will happen during the construction, uh, pro construction of the project. So, you see how massive the project is. So, it will have impact on several aspects during just during its construction phase. 
Uh, further, they have also looked into the health risk at the construction sites. So, we have also studied how to undertake health risk and uh, also uh, we see um, impact on sensitive receptor has been also studied here and then what kind of impact it will have due to the labor camp. So, they are going to have labor camp uh, with all the people working. So, what kind of possibilities are there uh, with respect to health? So, there are construction workers are more prone to infectious disease like HIV, AIDS and so on. So, how those things will be uh, taken care of and then also impact due to blasting and then also the ground vibration those calculations have been made. Now, uh, so that is about the uh, construction phase. Now, we will look at uh, impact uh, due to project operations. So, how they have looked into it. So, they have identified that there will be impact on noise, vibration impact due to train, there would be impact on water supply and sanitation at stations and refuse disposal and sanitation and electromagnetic interference which can happen. So, you see all that has been calculated here and you can see where all locations they have been documenting and water supply and sanitation how they have been recording about the requirements and then they also looked at the impacts due to depot. So, not just the rail track, but also because of the operation of the depot. So, uh, where the cleaning would uh, take place. So, washing lines, operations and maintenance, workshops in an office. So, it will have impact on water supply, effluent treatment, oil pollution would happen, noise, surface drainage, solid waste and cutting of trees would happen there. So, uh, that was about the impacts. Now, looking at the positive environmental impact. So, they looked at the negative now looking at the positive environmental impact. So, positive environmental impact was identified as employment, benefit to economy, mobility, safety, traffic con condition reduction, reduction in number of vehicle trips, less fuel consumption, reduced air pollution, carbon dioxide reduction in number of buses, saving in road infrastructure, traffic noise reduction. So, you see the uh, initial argument what we have been talking about environmental status and then how we are looking at the sustainable way of uh, approaching it. So, uh, they have in, uh, in the end also used the checklist of impact. So, how they are summarizing it, how they are uh, looking at it. So, you look at uh, there are various uh, methods of carrying out impact assessments. So, you see the ad hoc method, checklist method, matrix, network, overlay, in environmental index, index, cost benefit analysis. So, here you see they have adopted the checklist of impact and all these impacts have been identified and where it is negative impacts, no impact and positive impact. So, you can look at this checklist of impacts. So, impact due to project location. So, here they are summarizing everything impact due to project location. You can see impact due to project design, project construction, project operation and all the parameters which they have looked into. Further, they have prepared the environmental management plan. So, how they are looking at it and then they have prepared a tab tabular form, all these issues which they have to take care of, which laws and regulations they would adhere to, by when they have to do it, what kind of doc uh, documentation would be required and which will be the authority with which they will be dealing with. And then the range of mitigation measures, uh, you can see all range of mitigation measures here, compensatory effort afforestation, construction, material management, uh, safety management, labor camp, energy management, hazardous waste management. So, all these range of uh, mitigation measures will be taken and what kind of plantations they are going to do here and then also environmental management and monitoring plan. So, what kind of organizational structure would be there, what is the environmental management plan, how they are going to monitor the plan and then how they are going to maintain the documentation and record keeping. So, that all has been discussed here and then also the disaster management, how what kind of prevention actions they would take, what kind of reporting procedure would be followed and what kind of communication system would be there, emergency action committee which will be there. Further, you also look at the emergency measures. So, what kind of emergency measures are provided in the project, emergency lighting, fire protection and then uh, they have developed an um, 
Environmental Ma Management Action Plan EMP. So, you can see uh, at various uh, at the design phase how they are doing it, pre construction stage how they are undertaking it, and then for all the aspects domain which we have discussed, you can see here, then you can see at the construction phase as well, and then you see at the operation phase uh, as well how they are going to take it. So, uh, you see that they have also like it was the requirement of GCA that uh, they have to have a pro a thorough public consultation. Uh, you have uh, learned about public consultation uh, concept here. So, they have done consultation at the project level plus uh, you can see the picture here where all they did at the uh, project level plus they did and then they identified all the issues which were raised, what kind of suggestions were made by the stakeholders and what kind of mitigation measures have been taken. So, all that has been documented. Then you also see the consultation at the city level. So, uh, when did they conduct it that has been documented and what kind of issues were raised, what kind of suggestions were made and what kind of uh, actions have been taken to that. So, you see that they have documented it in with respect to photographs when and where they were conducted and all that you can see in the table where it was done, the date it was done, place it was done and what kind of inputs came and what kind of actions were taken. So, all that has been documented you can see the minutes of the meetings also documented here. So, uh, that is what we saw in the case study. So, uh, uh, summarizing today especially uh, while looking at this case study, we uh, reflected upon all the learnings which we have seen from uh, what kind of environmental context, uh, environmental pressure we are dealing with and what kind, how do uh, in practice we handle all these aspects. So, uh, uh, by looking at Mumbai Metro uh, Line 3, Kulaba Bandra Seeps project, we try to understand all those aspects. So, these were our key references for this. Uh, so, we looked at this case report, I have given you the link for that and uh, our references were also to the other uh, part of uh, what course book which we have been using and uh, these are the suggested watch and read. Winding up, please feel free to ask questions, let us know about any concerns you have. Do share your opinions, experiences and suggestions. Looking forward to interacting and co-learning with you while exploring AIA. Thank you.